Hello everyone, this is Fletch from Twilight Render. Welcome to the Twilight Render Getting Started video tutorial series, Six Essentials to Rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render Plugin. Please download the files from the link in the description below and feel free to follow along. I'm an architect and designer myself, so there's no reason to be intimidated. I'm here to help, so let's dive in together. Let's get started by opening the Getting Started tutorial file. It says right here in the file name, Twilight Getting Started Tutorial.skp. In our first episode, we spoke about modeling. In our second episode, we talked about camera position. In our third episode, we spoke about materials. And in the fourth, we spoke about the environment. Today, we're going to talk about lighting. Lighting, it's probably the most complex part of rendering for a lot of people. And uh, the first big mistake that people make is trying to throw in a bunch of lights into an existing scene and just hit render and hope for the best. But the wisest and perhaps the most professional course of action would be to first learn how to control a single light. So we're going to open up a new scene and talk about lighting. So here we are in a new scene with SketchUp. It's completely empty and we're going to build a test cube, like a test room, and we're going to just look at a single light inside that room and see how it acts in different situations. So let's build a room 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot cube. Or uh, in my case, I'm in metric, so it'll be 3 meters by 3 meters by 3 meters. Okay, so now we will delete the front face and we will select everything and lower reverse faces. Set it up so we're looking at the front. Zoom in slightly. And then we'll set that up as a scene in SketchUp. There we are. We'll also go to speed things up if we we'll go to animation and disable that. There we go. Now it'll just shoot right back to scene one. Now let's drop in a light. Just hit create light. It wants three points. The first point is a reference point. I'm thinking in the middle of the room I'm going to put the light so that's my reference. I'd like it hanging below the ceiling a little bit so I'm going to click here in the middle of uh, the room on the blue axis. And now it wants a target so I'm going to click the floor. I can change this to anything I want. I'm going to call it light one. And I'm going to turn off the sun and set the sky to background color. Oh, background color. I guess we could leave it gray. doesn't matter because the background color will never contribute reflections or light to the scene. Sun disabled. Here we go. So if I use uh, Exploration Render and hit play, it will show us that we have the room here. I'm also going to set up the rendering to be 600 by 600 and uncheck view to proportions. Actually, if I was using the hobby, I would use 500 by 500 and I would set the render setting to 01 prelim. It's a perfect setting for quickly testing out uh, lighting. And here we go, we've got our box sitting in here and we can see our light. The first default light that you put in with Twilight is going to try to represent a 100 watt incandescent bulb. But as you know today, uh, maybe incandescent bulbs are a little out of fashion, a little old fashioned, but it's a good starting point because you kind of generally know how that should be looking in your space. And you know, for instance, that if a 100 watt bulb were in this room, it'd be quite bright, but it doesn't feel like it's very bright here in the test rendering. So we should always look at the post processing and we need to boost the exposure because if you were to take a photo of this room, the exposure would definitely be uh, much higher on your camera settings. Uh, so we're just going to boost the exposure up and now you can see that the light is nice and bright. Another uh, post-processing type is called uh, this linear tone mapping, which is dark and light option. So we can increase the light to. You see how that light brightened up and we can increase the dark to Let's try two and see what happens. See how that brightens up the whole thing. So I generally like when I use linear to set it to 1.5 and to set the light to uh, 
but again this has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis so um, for now let's just use simple exposure of 1.5 so we can see that the brightness is boosted here the radius for this light is five centimeters so we know that this light is a 10 centimeters wide light bulb this is a good size at default but if you're putting it inside of a very small light fixture you might need to change this radius down the radius of your light is what determines the soft shadow for that light fixture so if we were to have a table or something in this space i'm just going to project an object out into the space here And let's reload geometry, and we'll be able to see that the soft shadow here, I'm going to boost the exposure to 2. You can see that the shadow edge is soft. And if we change this size to 1, then this shadow edge will get sharper. And if we change it to, say, 10, it should get much softer. Okay. Next. If we want to, we can change this light to be a spotlight. And the spotlight has two cones. It has a fall off cone and a hot spot cone. When it's a point light, all of the power of the light, the 100 watts, is being spread around the entire room. But if it's a spotlight, all that power is concentrated in one direction. So it will seem much brighter in some areas, and then all of a sudden the room will seem much darker. It's because all this light is concentrated within that cone. If we set the cone's fall off to 90, we'll see that this cone expands to 90 degrees, 45 degrees either side of the center line. And the hot spot, if we set this to, say, 80, you'll see that it gets very bright up to the edge, and from 80 to 90, it falls off to zero. Don't worry about this um, jagged soft shadow. This is due to the fact that we're using preliminary settings. If you increase your render settings, the quality of the soft shadow increases, but also render times increase. So we have basically uh, very low sampling on the soft shadows so that we can quickly see our lights and how they're working. This is exactly what the prelim setting is for. If you right click on your spotlight, you can choose Twilight Render V2 Set Light Target, and it will simulate with a purple cone the throw of light and how it's going to look. So if we do that and then we reload this, you can see how that light is reflected on the wall. Very, very similar to how this cone of light is being thrown. That helps us visualize exactly how that light is aimed and really gives you a fine control in a very simple, quick way. So I highly suggest using that set light target. If it's a point light, or if it's a spotlight, and with IES, set your color. So here we click on color, we can choose any color we want for that light and it'll change the color. Keep in mind that the lighter or darker your color is, uh, will change the power output of the light. A light that's black can't put out the same amount of, of lumens as a light that is white. It's just naturally pretty obvious that a white light will throw more light. So keep that in mind as you choose your colors. Um, if you click on the RGB tab, you can choose the Kelvin color. And it's highly suggested you look at the manufacturer for your light fixture and choose the correct Kelvin color. If I were to go to the end of the numbers here, hit backspace, and type in 4700 for a typical nice warm LED color or incandescent color choose convert button it'll give you this color here and then you can click back into the edit light dialog and that color will be loaded into this uh, light fixture you'll see that the light color looks more realistic when you render it in your scene so choose uh, your light color carefully and you know feel free to tweak this color to be exactly what you're looking for in your scene here we can see two examples of how light color is quite warmer than you might imagine. Here on this exterior you can see that these are probably LEDs on the outside, white colored LEDs, but on the inside a white warm uh, light has been used. So choosing the 
colors is really important to uh, determine what it's going to look like. In fact, you might have to change their color here. And one way to do it is quickly test. Let's choose a color that's more yellow. Click back on this version here. You know, we might have to choose something and keep rendering and testing until we're happy with the same color of light that's coming out in this example image. So find an example image of the light color that you're looking for. You can test back and forth to get that just right. Testing in a very small scene is much easier than testing in your full architectural scene with all the lights and materials and geometry that it takes to test render. Here the test rendering is very, very quick. I think we understand fall off and hotspot now. Um, if you want to skip the watts and go straight to the manufacturer's website, find out how many lumens the fixture puts out. It'd be a great idea because uh, the lumens is the most accurate and easiest to use in my opinion. So if a light fixture says it puts out 2900 lumens, just type that in. But what you want to do is insert the lights in the actual place that they will be in the scene, set the correct color, and then um, make sure that you've set the right power, make sure that you've set the right post-processing, then you have the best chance of making a great rendering. Let's look at projector lights real quick. Projector lights actually send out an image, so let's go load an image into this. Here I've loaded an image of the Barcelona Pavilion. I choose Set Light Target. Should be able to see this. There we go. Now, um, maybe I want to have that light be wider, so I can change the size of it here. But uh, another way to do it is to move it back in the space a little bit. And it will get bigger, just as a real projector would in a room. Keep in mind that the power of a projector light should be much higher. As you know, uh, let's say a conference room projector, or maybe a gobo light in a disco space is going to be a much higher power than your average 100 watt incandescent light bulb. So I'm going to set the radius to 1. So I make sure it's not trying to render soft shadows for this light. And let's boost the power again. And since there's so little light in the room, maybe in post-processing I should have been boosting the light that way instead of trying to boost the lumens. So typically if you're in a conference room with just a projector showing, uh, maybe there's going to be a few little lights around, but you'll have to boost the exposure in your space. Finally, you have the IES, and the IES is an actual file you download from a manufacturer's website. Each of their lights that they produce, they will provide an IES light file for you. Here we have some IES files that we have downloaded in the past. This is for a 100 watt incandescent floodlight. Um, so let's load that in to see what happens. Make sure that your power multiplier is set to 1. Your radius is accurate to your light fixture. And if you look at the light when you load the IES file in, you will see that it changes shape based on how this, uh, stopping this exploration render for a second, changes based on the IES information in this light. I'm going to go back to this original scene one. I'm going to delete this light because now I've moved it out of the space. I'm going to insert a new light. I'm going to right click and you can choose what kind of light to insert. I'm going to choose the IES style. Place it in here. Place it in the middle of the space and I'm going to point it. Oh, let's point it straight down for instance. Now if I go load the IES file in there. Let's see what happens. Here we can see what kind of light it's being thrown by this light. We use this and rotate around that object and we can see that the light's going to be strongest coming out the middle it's going to spread but there's like zero light coming off this side of the light fixture if i go back to our scene you'll see all the light is thrown 
to the left and up with that IES file. So now how do we target that light? Well, we can target from different ways. We can rotate that light using SketchUp's Move tool and change how that light is represented just by rotating that light fixture like this. Let's say we wanted it facing the back wall or um, actually let's let's face it this way we don't actually have a a wall behind us in this scene we deleted it I'm going to move this light over to be next to the sidewall you don't want the light to intersect geometry so we're going to move it away from this wall just uh, about five centimeters about two inches and now when it renders you'll see how it throws the light okay let's choose a different IES file and see what happens let's try this um, flood narrow 90 degrees keep in mind that IES files can contain a lot more information about the throw of light for your light fixture so they will they will render a little bit more slowly let's try that now we can see how the lights being thrown what if we move it away from that wall and we try it like that we have to update to geometry after we move that light there we go we can see how that light fixture is acting let's rotate it this way and see what happens so again go to the manufacturer's website download their IES file and make sure you've got it oriented in the correct direction so that it can uh, do the best good for your scene notice the strong power is coming off of here so if it seems like it's blowing out might want to lower our exposure and we have set power multiplier to 1 because all the power information is inside the file so if the file seems like it's dark that's probably because the manufacturer is telling you that that light is quite dim. There is one type of light that we haven't discussed yet, and that is the light emitting surface, or LEM, area lights. So all different terms for the same thing. It is simply a material that emits light. So it's not found in the lighting dialog, but rather in the material templates. So let's talk about that real quick. The advantage of that can be myriad, uh, but uh, light emitting surfaces do have a little bit more dependence on what kind of render setting you're using. So typically for interiors, you would like to use light emitting surfaces because they produce maybe the most realistic form of light with the exception maybe of an IES file. But um, they do increase render times on the easy one through seven render settings so um, if you're prepared for increased render times feel free to use it it doesn't um, affect it in any other way but on easy 09 they look the best and it doesn't seem to affect the render times as much keep that in mind as you render with uh, light emitting surfaces we're going to render on uh, easy low or on prelim yeah let's try uh, easy low and let's show a quick example of a light emitting surface we can go to components and go to um, just type in uh, flat screen tv uh, let's see i think this one by mark h is pretty good so we can come in here and let's apply a new material we're going to insert an image be sure you've got texture chosen here and pick any image you like and we're going to paste it in here and make it bigger okay texture position so we simply choose template material click on our new image that we inserted choose template emitter um, low voltage 50 watt now here's the important part if you choose emitter and choose fake emitter it will render instantaneously in the easy one through seven render settings but it will not 
shine any light out so you can use this for easy one through seven render settings if you choose invisible it will uh, disappear so that's definitely not what you want but it is in a lot of cases exactly what you need so we're gonna leave it on just normal emitter type we're gonna close it this is all default settings for that emitter and let's quickly render and see what happens so that render setting is ideal for a computer screen or television screen if you want to represent that in your scene it's that simple if you want to use the easy one through seven render settings but not slow down your render just uh, place a point light right here let's choose point and insert it right there in front of the screen and then we'll choose the material and change this to fake emit stop this and we're going to reload so we get our new settings and there you go and then you can change the power of this to be something like well the screen was set to 50 watts there you go you can see that it's looks like it's casting light from the screen even though it isn't really but it renders here I'll shut off this light so we'll go tools all off and when it renders there's no light being cast by that thing but it renders very very quickly so there you go if you need to do light emitting screens uh, works great for signage it works great for all sorts of applications and you can make some amazing effects with it it also works with uh, PNG images with alpha uh, channels so you can uh, just do all sorts of neat effects with this it get very artistic it's very powerful all right let's delete these and let's show the other major application from an architectural standpoint would be a light emitting surface for us like a soffit light or a ceiling light let's build a, a soffit light real quick in here I copy this down about uh, 30 centimeters or a foot and we're gonna make this about six inches or 15 centimeters deep we're gonna extrude this out and we're gonna go 25 centimeters or 30 centimeters about a foot there we go well let's just paint the bottom real quick just so we can see how it works I'm gonna paint this bottom surface with a color I'm gonna change the name to emitter and we're gonna apply the emit template just choose incandescent right now and we'll go to this and render it let's look at the settings here so we've got exposure set to 1.5 and uh, the last test that I did was also set with 1.5 so keep in mind that when you're doing interior lighting you're gonna want to boost your exposure sometimes even up to 2 depends on what kind of scene you're doing so let's render that and see what happens and there we go we have the light emitting surface and it uses the SketchUp color we change that to white there we go okay so you can see that it really slows down the rendering when you throw an emitter in there um, even on this tiny image and that's because again we're using um, easy setting low I believe that if you use easy set yeah easy prelim sure it goes faster okay so prelims just amazing setting all right so I'm gonna copy this and paste it onto the top We're going to stop that to improve our performance here. Gonna paint that on top. I'll show you how it's, there it is, it's on top. And then we're going to paint the bottom back to the default. Let's uh, see what happens now when it's pointing upwards. 
that's a very natural looking soffit light and works fantastic in architectural situations. So what happens if you're trying to make an animation and you don't want to wait for this emitting surface to render? Can you fake that? Well, um, great way to fake it. Um, first of all, if you set a light emitting surface to be a fake emitter, like I said, it won't cast light unless you're in Easy 09 and uh, Easy 10. I suggest using Easy 09 for interiors and not Easy 10. A lot of people jump to Easy 10. Easy 10 is really for technical renderings, um, uh, rendering a diamond ring or um, things like lasers going through prisms and things like this. But for architectural renderings, ideally, Easy 09 is, is their best bet. So. Um, but for animations, Easy 09 is probably out of the question. So you need something that renders quickly. And your emitting surface, like uh, in this case, you can just delete that face and, and not have it at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is delete the top of this right now. Okay, I'm going to hide the ceiling for a second here. Let's look down from the top. So what you want to do is use a series of lights to represent the uh, light emitting surface if you want to fake a soffit light. And what we'll do is we'll place a light temporarily right here. I clicked twice in the same place and I'm pointing up. And then I'm going to change that to be a spotlight. And what we want to do is set the fall off to be 180. And we want the hot spot to be 170. And then we're going to move that down to sit down inside the soffit space. And we're going to move that along here, about 10 centimeters in. Now we're looking down from the top, we can see that it's nicely positioned. Now what we want to do uh, is we're going to copy this around, but so that we can adjust it later as we work, I want to create a uh, component out of this light. So I'm going to create um, some geometry that I can attach to this light object and create a component that I can move around and work with the spacing and whatnot without um, actually creating any geometry in this case. So I'm just going to select that line. It's aligned with the center of this light object. Um, I could even maybe make another line that shows me the position there. Select those two lines and the light object. I'm going to right click and choose Make Component. I'm going to call it Soffit. And we will choose Replace Selection with Component. Okay. So now when I look from the top and I copy this over, I can easily go to that line, come back here, and say Divide by. Eight. Then we could mirror that. Select all. Use my mirror plugin. Lastly, we can rotate this to copy it. And let's position it using this. I know that this needs to go back towards the wall right there. And there's the advantage of setting that up, that light component like that, so I can align it nice and simple. Keep it clean and simple. And now if we, so we don't have this emitter surface there anymore. So what we want to do is change the color of that light. So we'll choose this. And change the name of this to change it to soffit fake emit and we'll change the color let's give it a warm color there we go let's see how that's looking okay so we see it's blowing out so let's back that off a bit 
We can see that this is set to 100 watts. Let's try 10 watts. And there we go. It's looking fantastic. And it renders very quickly. That took about 3 seconds to render. Whereas the other one took closer to like 11 seconds to render when it was a uh, emitting surface. So it saves a lot of time. And again, just be careful with what color your lights are. You can really improve the, the realism of your scene by choosing the right color. Um, when in doubt, just leave it white. A common light fixture that you'll need is a can light. So let's make one of those. First, I'm going to choose this. We got 24 sides on our circle. And let's just draw a circle here. If it's a 6 inch diameter can light, it would be a 3 inch radius. So I'm going to type 3 inches, which is approximately 7 or 8 centimeters. And then I'm going to offset this 1 inch. And then we're going to push pull this down uh, 0.25 inches or about half a centimeter. Now we're going to push that up 6 inches or 15 centimeters. And we have our can light. So we're going to place our first light inside of there. So we're going to choose right click and choose spotlight. I'm going to kind of hover my mouse over this circle for SketchUp to focus on the center point. Place it at the center and then I'm going to go up in the blue direction. and Place it kind of in the middle and then I'm going to point it back down. Okay, so let's look at this from the side. I'm going to turn off perspective view, go to front view, and we're kind of in the middle of this can light. So what we want to do is get the light to shine some light on the inside of the can, but we want most of the light to go down out of the can, so I'm going to place it like that, 120 and 20. So if I were to right click on it and Oops, I've got to choose this first. Right click, highlight render, set light target. Now I can get this purple preview, and that shows me, let's turn this off, shows me that the light is going to shine inside the can along the edge so that it'll light up inside of there. Now maybe I want to slide that light up just a little bit more. Let's go three centimeters. And right click and choose set light target again so I can see that preview. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's hit preview render on this. Okay, don't worry about the speckles right now. This is a prelim render setting. If you choose a higher quality render setting, it looks like that. So those speckles go away. We're going to use prelim. This is just for checking our lights. And let's give it a warm color again. I'm going to choose that. Now here's the important part. Again, choose x-ray view. I'm going to choose everything there. I'm going to right click, make component, can light, 100 watt. Let it glue to any surface. Let it cut the opening. Replace the section selection with the component. Hit create. Now if I move that around, let's go back to the top view. Turn off perspective. Close that, close that. And let's move this in the space. There we go, scene one, and render. And that's how we can make a can light. Very simple. Okay, so maybe that color is not great, but this, you get the idea. Another light fixture you want to create in architectural renderings might be a wall sconce with a lampshade. So let's create a very simple uh, lampshade. Let's say we have a circle uh, again three inches 
uh, maybe two inches. And we extrude that up. Gonna group that. Go inside the group. I'm hitting spacebar because I have that set up to hide uh, non-active geometry. Now what we want to do is just offset this outside circle one millimeter and push pull this top to bottom. Make sure that it went away. Good. And now we will apply a material. And let's pick this bisque and apply. And let's call this lampshade. Move this up. I had to hit control to get it to release from the surface of the table where I drew it. Erase that one. Center this in the space. And then let's go to top view. Turn off perspective view. Turn on this view. I'm going to purge my scene here. We're going to insert a light. Point light? No. Spotlight. I want it to be here. And it doesn't... Uh, let's go to front view. There we go. And we can move that down into the light. There we go. Back to front view again. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to rotate it here. Get that inside there. Come on, work with my SketchUp. Okay, you get the idea. So let's change this to uh, sconce spot. Well, again, give it a warm color. Maybe that's just a little too saturated, huh? Okay. And let's set the fall off to 180 again. Hotspot can go to uh, 90. And now we choose materials and give this the template. Go to translucent, use shade, translucent lamp shade. Templates, translucent, shade. And close that and let's hit render real quick. Let's see what's happening. It's looking great. But we're in medium render settings. So we're going to go back to prelim and let's see what happens. There we go. We're getting a much faster preliminary setting. Maybe we put it on low and maybe get a little bit higher quality. There we go. And now I'm going to place one more light inside of it. We're going to place a little point light in there. Right click for point light. Choose the color to be the same as the last one. And we're going to place it inside. So top view, perspective off. Let's close this view. Stop that rendering. There we go. Uh, maybe a radius of three instead of five so it fits inside the light. And again, let's see how it's going. Renders very quickly and looks fantastic. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. So another way, of course, you could use light emitting surfaces on your lampshades and you can use the fake emitting lampshade. Um, you can 
in the material properties you can set it to cast shadow or not so uh, but that only works with easy one through seven um, easy 9 does not let you fake cast a shadow or not so but we can turn the cast shadow off right here and now when we render it's going to be a lot brighter because the lampshade is not casting any shadow so you would not want to do that in this particular case but you might want to use that to your advantage in in uh, other cases so don't forget that that exists so let's try playing with some of these ideas in this getting started tutorial scene if we open up our prelim rendering and we start it up we see that we've got the sun on and everything let's go and throw a light in here put a little spotlight in change it to a spot let's Choose the select tool, right click, set light target. Let's look from the side. Let's turn off perspective. And let's point it towards this wall over here so we can see what's going on. We back to home. And we can see that the spotlight is very difficult to see because the sun is on and this is normal typically we don't have lights on during the day so let's go to our sun settings let's disable shadows inside of sketchup to increase performance let's uh, turn off inside the environment the sun and let's set our brightness to 0.5 for the sky we can set time of day to 9 p.m And now we're getting so somewhere with the the look of this scene. In order to get these light flares to go away, what we want to do is select the material template. We choose the default material and we'll change the color to a medium gray. This is also a good way to test your scene. Some call it a clay render. It helps really give you a good idea of your lighting. And let's do a couple of important material changes here. Let's paint our glass with translucent glass gray. Let's go to water and paint the water with the pool water. And let's paint the bottom of the pool with landscaping. Four inch river rock. Go back to home and we'll update the geometry now and here you can see the image is already a lot lot better much better so we're on low I'm going to change it to prelim so it'll render even faster and maybe you have a higher performing computer I'm using a laptop and let's go to model info and disable scene transitions so that we can switch our view faster alrighty now knowing what we know about can lights and how we build them if you have Twilight Pro you can download from our uh, red carpet section on the forum you can download the Twilight render lights and we can choose from these indoor lights there's a bunch of different ones available but let's choose this uh, down light 100 watt and put it in and you'll see that because the ceiling is a group it doesn't cut the hole so we need to go inside of the group and place that light now we're going to turn this on go to top view disable perspective and position this light and let's copy that here now 
let's choose 200, 200 centimeters, and then we'll multiply that by like 8, by 10, by 9, okay, there we go. And let's put some of those guys, let's say 450, 200, And we'll copy this, 200, and we'll copy this row, down that hallway, can't have one by that wall, let's copy this row over here. Alrighty. We'll delete that guy. I'm going to purge and we render. And something is strange here. It seems like the lights are not showing up. Let's go take a look. Okay, they're there. Let's go back to the home. Let's go closer. See what's going on here. I think there we did not set the exposure for the scene yet. Let's go to here and we'll go to simple. Yeah, let's set the exposure to 1.5. And let's also boost the light strength a little bit. These lights uh, would be stronger. Right now they're set to 100 watts. Let's try. Um, Let's try 400 watts. And there we go. I want to lower the strength of the sky now. Let's go to 0.25 for the sky. And that is looking pretty cool. Click back to home. And now we can maybe um, put in some wall sconces. Maybe there's a nice wall sconce on this part. So let's look for indoor manufacturer. Let's try this uh, Visa Colonnade light. pretty cool so it's really handy to have these lights that are pre-built and if you have Twilight Pro they're available to you there are 50 something different lights uh, of all different types and then you can take those and tweak them and modify them to match whatever situation you're working in let's go to the interior And let's choose a different position. I'm going to stop this exploration render for now. Let's choose a position for our camera in here. Okay, and temporarily I'm going to disable all the other lights for now. Let's turn them all off. And we're going to place this uh, wall sconce again. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. If you're testing lighting, uh, a, a common beginner mistake with testing lighting is to have their full scene with all the materials and all the furniture and everything set up and then start putting in lights and this is a big mistake because the um, oops because I disabled all the lights in the scene it's also disabling the lights that were in the colonnade light so I'm gonna go to the light editor 
choose all on, go to lights, down light, and disable that one. And now we'll try this again. So I've turned off the can lights, but the colonnade light on the wall should work. I suspect we might be inside the wall, perhaps? Yeah, we're inside the wall. That's what's going on. Okay, yeah, we were inside the wall. Obviously, the more lights you have in your scene, the longer it's going to take to render. It's got a lot more to think about. And this is great prelim for how it's looking. Another thing you can do in the environment is choose a tree line sky. So I'm going to choose one. So you would choose, close this and reopen it so you can see what's been updated. We're on spherical sky and I've loaded a tree line sky background image. Uh, because I've set the brightness to, to 0.25, it's going to give me nice um, like silhouettes of trees in the background. And let's go into the light dialog and choose this can light and disable it. And hit render on that. I want to demonstrate how the spherical sky looks. Okay, it might be difficult to see in this view. Stop and we'll go back to the home view and I render on that. Okay. Now, um, there's light shining up from the spherical sky. So what I want to go do is add a quick plane here. Prevent the sky from shining upwards onto the model. Let's try again. And let's reduce the brightness of the sky again to 0.1 maybe. There we go. We can see how the sky has a few clouds and a few silhouettes of trees. Okay. Might want to increase that just a slight bit. Um, 0.1 to 0.2. Okay, so point two is maybe too bright. There, that looks really good. If you have a nice sunset sky somewhere, it's a good idea to use that. But this is a nice trick in case you don't. Let's look at this view again. And when we look out, let's try and render a little bit larger view this time. Again, without the down lights just to see the background through the windows, how that's looking for us. Okay, we're going to stop this before it finishes anti-aliasing, because I just wanted to see this, how the trees are looking in the background, and it seems like it's maybe a little dark. So we'll boost that again, and let's try uh, 0.15 this time. And then we will also enable the lights in the scene. We'll go to Tools, All On, and we'll hit Play, and I'm going to fast forward um, to the end of this rendering. Okay, so here's how it's looking, and it's looking fantastic. Uh, we can boost up the exposure just a little bit to try to see what it's looking like with the background in there. And you can see that it's brightly lit. Now I'm going to do the same image again, but this time choose Easy 9 And I'll fast forward this as well. So, uh, let's talk about one more light type I think I did not discuss yet. And that would be over here. I'm going to create a scene so I can get back to this. Let's go... Let's go back to this scene. Here we go. 
What if I want to have a little step light, a little downlight step light here? So let's draw a little rectangle here. Now we can take that and if we go to X-ray view, we can see we're grabbing that geometry there. And hit make component. We don't need it to cut an opening. Replace selection. Call it step light. And create that. And SketchUp is acting funny. Erase that. We'll move this back now. So I think I will. There we are. All right. Now let's go into there. We'll erase the bottom and erase the back. Select everything. Let's give it a thickness. There we go. Now let's insert a little spotlight in there. Change this to one centimeter and change the wattage to something low like um, 10 watts perhaps change the type to spot let's change the fall off to 120 and we can rotate this to shine out using the move tool from SketchUp to just Rotate that quickly. Now we've got a light that shines out. It's going to bounce around inside of there and also shine down onto the wall as well. Let's give it a color that's warm. Go back to our view here. And copy this up. Okay, there we went. Let's go to let's go to the lights dialog. What I want to do is Turn all lights off and go to the step light and re enable the step light. And we can see the nice reflections in the glass from the environment. And there you can see our lights on the steps. So these are just some examples, and there's uh, much more you can do with lighting. Um, again, choose to test your lighting on a very small quick scene instead of throwing yourself right into the most difficult complex scene available. Uh, always do your testing on a little tiny side job to make sure you got everything right and you understand how it should be working before you go into your big scene. Spend a lot of time rendering something and fighting with it and getting frustrated. I really appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I hope this has been helpful for you. This has been Fletch for Twilight Render, and we will see you on the forums.